Hi, this is Robert Gardner. We're going to work on feet today. And I wanted to find out from you, whose feet are ticklish? And do you not like receiving foot massage because your feet are ticklish? As we're working on Joy's feet today, we're going to mobilize the structures in the feet. This is very common for the way I work. It's not just using a cream and glide to slide over the feet. It's using bony structures to mobilize and access muscles. When I'm teaching classes for massage therapists, I'm often telling them that muscles cause movement, and then we're using movement to try to access those muscles. We're able to reach down into the origin and insertion of those various muscles by using a little bit of pressure that's going to mobilize the tarsals and the small structures of the feet. Very complex. Even I, with all my anatomical training, don't know all the names of the various bones and specific muscles in the feet. I'm going through pressing in different spots. I'm also occasionally looking up at Joy's face because I'm trying to make sure I don't use too much pressure. And I'm always trying to make it as comfortable for myself as possible. I'm trying to stack my hands, stack body weight. so that it's easy for me to do the work and doesn't compromise my own body. You don't want your hands hurt, hands to hurt while you're working. If something's uncomfortable, I can use, move to a different technique. I'm using my thumbs here just to feel my way around right through here. Both good spots on joy right on the outside. I'm just feeling my way through. You don't have to know all, again, of the anatomy. I don't want you to feel like you can't work on people effectively if you don't know every little minutia of muscle and bone. I'm gonna support her heel and see if I can come in and apply a little bit of pressure along this part of the arch. Her foot is gonna turn out, and I'm trying to figure out how to stack myself. There we go. And you tell me joy too much. Once I get a good, broad forearm, I'm moving my arm back and forth. I'm exaggerating that motion just so you can see it. Then I can move side to side. And I find out, what about right there? She wants a little more pressure. So instead of using this broad structure, I'm gonna to move to something that's a bit more pointed just to see how she responds. Okay, that was a little too much. Now what about there? Better? There we go. Every person you work with is gonna respond slightly differently. You have to make the pressure meet the person you work with. For some people, this is gonna to be too much pressure. For her, I think this is right at her edge. And usually that's where I try to live in session. I'll back off at points, but then I'm going to go right up to the amount of pressure they can handle. It may feel intense, and they seem to get a stronger release from that in my clinical experience. Now I'm going to maintain that pressure, and I'm going to engage that little bit of side to side. That was too much. What about this way? Too much? Okay. Typically, it's going to be more tender where there's not as much tissue. So big, thick, dense muscle can take more pressure. 
essentially at a point I believe I'm pushing towards bone, which means that the muscle doesn't have anywhere to go. I'm pushing it into a bony structure, which is where it can be more intense. Is that too much, Joy? Okay. Now, what about any of this motion there? You strive to make the work ergonomic, meaning I'm, I'm forming and shaping around her foot. I'm gonna back off. That was a little intense. And then I'm gonna slowly work towards the opposite side, doing the same thing. Going slow and giving her some time to release. So same area, this little part of the arch here feels fleshy. You can see if I get into here, see how it moves the big toe? And that's what I'm thinking about when I talk about muscles causing movement and then using movement to access muscles. Right through, how are we there? Too much? There we go. Find a good spot. You can even see my fingers and hands. I let them hang out. I'm not trying to strain. I'm trying to stack my shoulder above my elbow so I can just sink down and in and let gravity do the work. You're always working at trying to find the easiest way to do something that causes the least amount of strain. Okay. So if I change the angle, is that better? Okay. So let's see if we can shift it and make it better. If I hold from the top. Joy was expressing there was a little bit of discomfort on the outside of the foot, so I just changed the hand position to try to make it work better. It, everyone will be slightly different, the foot their foot is shaped differently. Still too much there? So let's go work on that for a second. I communicate with the receiver and just try to optimize their session based on what they feel in, in there. Okay, now is it more tender posterior or anterior to the front? In the middle. But then when I grab here, roll back and forth, how's that? Let it go. Uh huh. I can teach therapists how to think. It's much more challenging to teach them how to feel. And on top of that feeling is how do they communicate with the receiver? On camera, Joy just had an exchange with me. She was trying to explain what she was feeling on the outside of her foot. And as I was pulling this way, it felt like it was too much out here. So, but if I take her the opposite way, I think she likes this more because that's what her body is calling for. Immediately, I just change it up. Work on her in a slightly different way. I'm gonna give her some length. And then start to press. Aha. In there? There we go, okay. She's talking about this spot down in here. I'm gonna see if I can block with this forearm and then come in with the thumb. And then, I'm gonna sink in. How's that there? Now she wants more. Right there. And up and down or side to side? All of it. Okay. And I'm going to hang out right 
there. <clears throat> it's all a matter of trying to stack your body. Increasingly, I compare my work to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because I always feel like I'm, I'm mobilizing my body and using everything physically within my capacity to try to take out my opponent. In this case, which is her you know, foot pain. I'm gonna stack myself. She, she was saying earlier that she liked the thumb. The problem with me using my thumb is my thumb is gonna get tired much more quickly than using larger muscles and larger structures like my elbow here. Let me get you a little bit of movement here. Too deep? There we go. All right, there. Back off for a second. I'm gonna see if I can do it with the opposite elbow. Changes the angle, changes the position. Just trying to make it better for Joy and easier for me. There. Now she's giving me hand signals. We need to give her some of those things from the guy with the airport. And slowly, I'm gonna wrap my thumb around. So instead of just using the pad, I'm actually gonna wrap this joint around the foot. <clears throat> you can see this guy making a grip. So right in there. Now, I'm gonna reinforce with the other thumb. How's that? Okay, too much? There we go. Now, it's using larger structures in my thumb and hand instead of just the joints in my thumb. I'm using this thumb to reinforce the pressure. Lots of this I picked up organically on my own. I wasn't taught to do this in a formal way. I just kept trying to figure out, much like Bruce Lee would punch his opponent by shrink wrapping his tissues around bony structure to deliver the maximum amount of force with the least amount of effort. I was doing the same thing in a bodywork context. I was trying to figure out how I could use my own body for optimal pressure and performance while helping the receiver and communicating with them. Coming back around into this plantar surface, the bottom surface of the foot, I think right in there, and I'm gonna reinforce the thumb. You can see organically how the work becomes general to specific, superficial to deep. We started off with these general mobilization, and as I communicated with Joy, we found something more specific in her foot. Now I'm engaging a pin and a stretch, or a pin and a mobilize. Now we're combining the two things that she liked, which was this movement with some pressure. So this doesn't turn the knee or the hip too much? Okay. I'm gonna back off a little bit. Is that better? Yeah, this feels like. Feels like it's super stretchy. I think Joy was about to come off of the table. <laughs> I'm gonna back off, and I'm gonna use a little bit of just glide here along the same area. I wanna see how she responds to this. Looks like it's still pretty intense to her. Right through this area. I'm using the side of my thumb. If I want to reinforce, I can. Usually, if it feels good, it is good. Don't think of it as something that you need formal training in. I would never discourage people from going to massage school, getting a massage license and working on people, but you can learn to do excellent massage by watching YouTube videos, getting feedback from the person you work with, and going slow and communicating. Massage is for everybody. Just 
people with licenses charge for it. So this little area, you can see as I press here, do you see your little pinky toe move? Hey, pinky toe. Right through here, she's feeling something she says feels sort of fibrous. She's want, wanting me to pay more attention to this area, so I'm just going in slow. You can see that my thumb is stacked. It's, it's causing a little bit of tension in my phenar eminence here, adductor pollicis, but my muscles have been trained over time as I'm working. I might do this for several strokes that get tired and switch to another tool, but I'm gonna slide through here and back towards the heel. Now, when yeah. we get over here towards bone, a little more intense. If I was being mean to Joy at a party, I would probably mash on this really hard. Because there's, there's nowhere for this to go. This is more muscle. But when we get towards the heel, and there, bone. And it starts to feel just a little more sharp right there. It's not the exact same thing. When I use my finger this way, I can move the tissue over the bone in a soft, sort of receptive way. Especially compared to what we just did, which was more intense. I, I tend to do this in session. I'm gonna push Joy right up to her edge, and then I'm gonna back off, be nice. And then repeat some of that process, because she'll feel better. This part of her foot will feel more open after we've opened this up after we flush the little blood flow through. People don't pay much attention to their feet. They don't get a lot of footwork, right? But there's tons of little detail uh, through this area. I felt what I call some little crunchies, some little tissue sliding past right in there. Your wife will never argue with you while you give her a foot massage. I don't know if you know that. Right in there. I'm gonna take a break on this one foot. I'm gonna go just to the other side just to see if there's any similarity over here. Yeah. Have you had problems with this left foot? Okay. So this part is just trying to balance out this right side, even though she wanted more attention over here. I'm just gonna go in and apply a little bit of pressure just to see, same sort of movement. And this feels tight to me, like she's got some tension through her calf, I can feel. But she was having much more response on this left side. Always, 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 how do I use my body in a way that honors it, but allows me to apply? See, easy, easy, easy. A little bit of hands and it's too much pressure. I can use my entire body weight if I choose. Just depends on what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna back off for a second and see about mobilizing the tarsals and moving these foot bones side to side. She likes this motion in particular. So I'm gonna come in and push on this side and then pull on the opposite. Is that too much? Aha, yeah. And back with the forearm. This time I'm gonna press to give her some length through the calf to mobilize in the direction she likes. Now I'm gonna wrap this hand on top and pull. And between those structures, we'll see how that feels. Yeah. Every session with every client will be slightly different. I'm always trying to figure out what's going to allow me to wrap my body to allow me to mobilize them with the least amount of effort, even when it comes to something as simple as feet. People think foot massage, they think a very specific way of working tissue. 
and increasingly, especially over the years as I've worked as a pro, it just continues to add nuance. I don't have any issue improvising with clients, figuring out as I go along. You have a basics, you know, for your training, but everybody's body is going to respond just slightly differently. Now back to that outside, I'm using the side of my thumb here to just slide down and through. Now I'm going to see if I can grip and pull the opposite direction. And that was a bit much. I'm going to wrap this part of my thumb. And if I wrap and pull, aha, now I'm going to see if I can do it with the opposite thumb reinforced. That was too much. So just this thumb. too much. We've got some heavy breathing going on here. I want to back off just a hair, just a little less pressure, same area. Now she's releasing and relaxing. If I go too fast and too deeply, she's going to tense up. That's the, the exact opposite of what I want. This right here feels like a starting point. I'm grabbing that and sliding along slowly. Too much again, you can see she clenched. I'm gonna move to the planter side of the foot just a little bit and slide along. And using that same pressure, it was a totally different experience for her on that different part of the foot. She's having still some tightness through here. I'm going in and pinching just a little bit on either side using a knuckle. You can see this little toe is getting some movement there. Too much. I'm gonna back off right to her edge. grabbing between those two points and just sliding back and forth. Something like this, this specific movement I may have never done before. When I'm in session, I sometimes tell myself to try to do one thing new, something I've never done before. This is the sort of stuff that results because occasionally you hit on something that's extremely effective. It's an easy way to ergonomically shape your body around the receiver to be able to get some good work done and make it easy for myself. Now I'm going to grab and slide down again, a little bit much. Now what happens if I go the opposite direction? Even worse. Okay. Good. We went from worse to even worse. Nice. <laughs> nice. It's the goal of every massage therapist. Still tender through there? Okay. So I'm gonna back off because we've been delivering so much pressure. I'm actually just gonna mobilize again, just to give her a break. If I stay in one area intense for too long, it again seems to have that same effect where they wanna tighten up. If I roll your foot to the inside, does that feel good? Okay. Now if I mobilize you this way. Okay. So you tell me as I bring you through all of these motions. You prefer the one where your foot goes back? Back and in? Okay. So of the two motions, you prefer this and then this. Okay. Do you still prefer when this part of the foot is going back or do you want it to point? Okay. 
and that's where I'm using movement to access muscle. So immediately in my head, I start going, hey, what, what structures are we lengthening? When I was done with the session here, I might pull out an anatomy workbook and try to figure out what muscles run along this line. She's commenting on the fact that she feels it even more up in her hip. A lot of people tend to externally rotate their hips, so it's actually having an effect not only on her leg, but also gluteals. It's lengthening those just from working the foot this way. And I'm gonna grab here and slide along. Too much pressure there? More length in the calves, plantar surface. I'm gonna go back to the other foot. And again, since we focus so much on the left, I'm just gonna balance out on the right just to give her a little bit of work here. I don't want this foot to feel neglected. Now, if I give her the same movement, yeah. And I always remind myself to relax my own shoulders, to breathe while I work. Sometimes I'll actually exaggerate that to where it's a little bit audible. Not only is it good for my breathing, but that little bit of audible helps the receiver. They'd usually hear that and remind themselves that they stopped breathing. Back off. And then both feet, a little bit of movement. Back on the inside again. Oh, so much to work. So much to work. This one goes to her big toe right in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. I'm gonna grab and then slide. Too much joy? No. There we go. Big Toe Tingle. It's a good band name. Just sliding along. Tons of bone, muscle, lots of movement through here. Like I said, I don't even know the names of all the muscles in the feet. They're so complex. I'll use movement and a little bit of pressure. Communicate with the receiver so you can do really really detailed and good footwork. When you work on someone and they go, oh, stay there, communicate with them. You do not need formal training to do really good massage. If all you did was replicate what we've done right here, I guarantee you it's a really high quality foot massage. And to close, I'm gonna lift both of her feet and I'm just gonna shake her out. A little bit of movement, a little bit of direction, maybe back and forth. We applied a lot of pressure, so this is just a light jostle. Thank you, Joy. Stay tuned for part two. We're gonna turn Joy onto her front so we can work the foot from another angle.